Greetings, my name is Mike from the band Hyaloxilis, and I am here answering questions for Antichrist magazine. Number one, please introduce Hyaloxilis to our subscribers. So Hyaloxilis is our uh, power, thrash, industrial, something or rather band. I'm not really sure how to describe it, so I'll just go with basically like operatic power metal meets technical thrash that is one i've heard that seems to fit the most the influences writing this stuff were basically like strapping and fear factory riffs with like nightwish or tristania vocals that's it there's more to it than that but that's it in a nutshell so i'm mike i play guitar bass on the recordings sometimes i scream nina ladarud is our lead vocalist and daniel devos plays drums and mixes our stuff as well question two what's the meaning behind the band name iloxlis is a genus of poison dart frog i wanted to name the band poison dart frog originally but you know i figured we could get a cooler name by finding another word for poison dart frog and hyloxylus is what we landed on question three can you tell us a little about make me the heart of our black of the black hole excuse me it's our debut full length released january 26 of this year we did basically everything ourselves the sound is a departure from the two EPs that we put out before, which are closer to, like, standard power metal. Closer. And, uh, yeah, I like to think the sound on this one is unusual, though really it's up to the uh, listener to decide whether or not we meet the definition of original, you know. But so far we've had people call us, like, unhinged and weird ass for the most part which i found extremely validating question four can you talk about lyrics on this release uh, there's not really a big through line with any of them it's just stuff that i wrote usually when i was uh like mad about something like uh sailors i wrote because i got nostalgic over an old band i had like years ago there's also some like story songs like uh severed and splitter they're about a dude who makes his way to the top of a mountain to kill god or something like that roughly that idea i gotta admit though a lot of the stuff that i put in i i just put in because i thought it sounded cool that's it Like, uh, for example, Splitter. I named that song Splitter because I was listening to Self Bias Resistor by Fear Factory. And I thought, you know, it might sound cool if I also named a song after an electrical component. Can you tell us a little bit about the cover art? It was designed by our uh, friend and a live bassist, Corey Torgerson. He did a really good job. There wasn't much to it, I just kind of told him I want like a star field with some writing on it, and you know, he sent me a few drafts, we worked out details like, you know, title and uh, band logo placement, and yeah, that was that. Real smooth process, would do it again. Highly recommend. What do you do for a livelihood outside of music? So Daniel teaches drums, Nina's a metallurgist, and I am a parts guy at a construction company. When did you first discover your interest in metal music? I heard one by Metallica when I was uh, 16. And that's what hooked me. Pretty usual story. Before that, I think the heaviest that I went was Rush. And until I had heard one, I kind of wrote metal off as like silly music for you know, tryhards. This obviously changed. What obstacles have you faced as a musician and how did you overcome them? I mean, the biggest one is just finding time to do it, especially when recording, you know, people get sick, can't always, you know, make it on time, you gotta reschedule stuff like COVID, really put a damper in that, because like me and Nina, we record vocals together and 
you know, I wanted to do this mostly in 2020 and 21, but like, you know, it was the peak of the pandemic, you know, I didn't want to make, make her sick or anything. So, you know, that, that pushed it back quite a bit. And other than that, it's just, I guess, finding money to do projects. But I mean, we have computers now and um, recording technology is really good. So it is very easy to do this stuff for relatively cheap. Is there a specific non-metal genre or artist you'd love to collaborate with? I mean, I guess Pearl Jam would re be pretty cool. How do you perceive the evolution of metal music over the years? I mean, it's a pretty broad question, but I have a few smaller observations. And I'm only going from when I first got interested in heavy metal. First observation were, I think, well, obviously there's more hi-fi production in everyone's recordings, and I noticed that around, like, the mid-2010s, it got to a point where most major label productions started to sound the same you know everyone's using the same patches but i think that's starting to change and there's more diversity in uh, mixes again which i think is pretty cool um second thing i'd say is uh, i don't know trad metal got really huge and i think that's kind of neat you know old school shit like um a lot of like the new old school bands like Traveler and Greyhawk and stuff, that scene kind of exploded like, um, has exploded in the past six or seven years. I think that's kind of cool. And the, uh, the other big one is, uh, everyone has virtual orchestra on their mixes. That, that's another thing that's gotten big over the past, I would say 10, 15 years or so. Okay, now they have something called rapid fire section just for fun, so let's go. Guitar shredding or drum blast beats? Blast beats, no question. Memorable, memorable concert you've attended? Easily. Blind Guardian 2015. I don't have to explain that one to you. If you've seen a clip of them doing the Bard song with everyone singing along, being in the middle of that is magical. No further explanation needed. Mosh pit or crowd surfing? Mosh pit, no question. 12 a.m. studio session or 6 a.m. rehearsal? 12 a.m. studio session. Late night stuff tends to be... That's when the memorable stuff happens, right? Plus, I wake up at 6 a.m. for work every day anyways. What is your guilty pleasure song? Every musician or fan has that one non-metal song that they love. You know, I don't really feel guilt about any of it, but one non-metal song I've uh, really been digging lately is You Look So Fine by Garbage. Lovely track. And finally, what are your future plans for Hyloxylus? Uh, I'd say book more... Uh, Normal band stuff, book more gigs, record more stuff, try to develop the sound more. That's basically it. And we're done. Thank you, viewers, and thank you, Antichrist Magazine, for um, letting me answer some questions. Goodbye.